again, Seth here from macOS10screencast.com. In this, well, additional screencast to the Keep of Maestro review, I'd like to show you a couple of workflows, more advanced workflows, like fast user switch with uh, Keep of Maestro, toggling Bluetooth on and off, uh, sharing files on Dropbox, and so on and so forth. I'd like to start this screencast today with the fast user switch. So my idea was now that I have Keyboard Master running, I could get rid of some of my menu bar entries. And the first thing I'd like to remove from my menu bar was the fast user switch. So in order to create these uh, workflows or uh, Apple scripts, um, I'd like to start off by showing you how I got rid of my menu bar entry here. You see on in the middle list where it says macros, there are four scripts listed, which are also listed in um, the menu bar because they are created as menu bar triggers only. And this way I can have my keyboard maestro engine running and make this uh, faster switch happening. So this is the menu item here, just added as just as normal so that it shows up here in the menu bar. And in the lower part, I have, I'm executing an Apple script, which is of course available for download on our website. Just set your username here in these votes, and all you have to do is then just run this Apple script from every trigger you are, well, you want to create. So if I want to switch now to my MOS or to my set account, I just hit the menu bar entry, and then I can log in into this other um, user account, which I won't do now because well, the, the screencast would stop recording and this would be a bit unfortunate. So the menu bar icon, the original menu bar icon has a special feature because it shows you which other users are logged in or what how many users are logged in. To simulate this in Keyboard Maestro, I'm executing another shell script here which is simply who who is uh, executing and displaying its results briefly which says please show me just a quick growl message when finished when i execute this entry now the, you, you see i like self-speaking names in my menu bar uh, this shell script is being executed showing a growl message which users are currently logged in and here you can see clearly see that i set is logged in and mos 10 screencasts as well. This is very handy. I hope you like this feature, which uh, this Apple script a lot. So the next thing was how to create uh, an Apple script, which shares the currently selected files on uh, Dropbox. In order to share uh, files on Dropbox, I've set up a very short, brief uh, Apple script, which is of course again available for download. This one is currently only um, created as a menu item, but I also want to be able to uh, execute this by a hotkey. So I set up a new hotkey, which is Control D, and the next step is just to uh, go to the sharing menu here, and I only want to execute this uh, macro group when the finder is active. So I select here available in the following applications. I hit the plus key here and select finder.app. So this way only finder is able to share uh, files. Let's, you see here, no menu item is listed. And when I switch to the finder, uh, again, this is the finder. And you see now clearly that this share and Dropbox control D is available. So how do you work with this script? How do you set it up for your own needs, of course? To create or to work with the script for your own needs, uh, we will have a look into the script. Um, here in the top of this script, I've created a couple of setters for handling or for working with the script. Uh, you set your destination here. This is your absolute path of your a Dropbox folder on your hard disk. So if you have, uh, let's say, if you if your name is Sad, you would obviously write here slash users slash Sad slash Dropbox, and of course the public dot uh, slash uh, whatever. 
The second line says uh, Dropbox public path. This is a bit more complicated to set up, but also very easy for us, of course. The way it works, you go to your public or your public folder in your Dropbox, then just um, add a add a random file here and select from the menu bar in Finder copy public link. Now paste this link here, and at the very beginning you see http.dl blah blah blah. Just copy or cut this out and paste the the the, the URL here and get rid of the rest. So when you save the script now and um, select everything and go back to the uh, keyboard maestro engine editor you can just uh, paste the script here then you can get rid of this script and now to show the script how it works of course you can uh, delete the randomly added file I can just create a random file for this purpose to just to show you how the script works then I'm hitting Control D a new window comes up because I have set up two uh, shortcuts for the same uh, thing or for two uh, things in Keyboard Maestro and once it's executed I can launch every application and there is my public link to that file in my clipboard. This is very handy to share files with other users using Dropbox. But be careful with this. Let Dropbox finish uploading before you send these links because I had a couple of well, I had a couple of uh, problems with this because the file wasn't uploaded uh, completely. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to use Keyboard Maestro together with iTunes. Here see I have set up a lot of menu bar, uh, menu entries. You can find these in the iTunes control list in the mac macro actions list. And here I added the most uh, important ones. You see here they have no triggers specified so they can't be executed anywhere it seems. But if you, if you have a look at the reviews you are aware that there is a Keyboard Maestro server running which you, which is available in... I have also set up here Start iTunes and Quit iTunes um, actions which are just process controls and here we find Quit application or Quit a specific application of course and uh, activate a specific application which would, which would launch the application. Now, you can use the iPhone, of course, the iPhone version of Keyboard Maestro to control the server, which is very easy because you can, <laughs> well, you can control how iTunes is acting from your bed or from your bedroom. Um, then if you want to play something just go to you have set up a very low volume for this purpose or for the screencast then just execute the corresponding mini bar entry and now you see uh, iTunes is playing so let me just pause iTunes so that it's not playing anymore and let me just go to um, iTunes and let me take down the volume all the way down uh, I've gone the already the next step which is sometimes I just want to be able to know which track is currently playing in iTunes without switching to iTunes therefore I've set up a hotkey uh, trigger which is control escape in my example and it, this is again an Apple script of course again downloadable this one I've put on my desktop um, of course you would put yours somewhere else uh, somewhere in a specific folder of course and just execute this script or enter the script, add the script here, sorry and when I go now to iTunes and here you see this is my song and this is waiting to end and when I get rid of all these menus now hit my uh, shortcut you will see at the top right corner a grow message coming up showing the currently playing track in iTunes in, well, in the top right corner of course